So as we start talking about short run production, what I want us to see is this idea of the function playing in and why we call this our production function. Just like in math, you have a function where you plug in any sort of input and out comes an output. We're going to do the same thing, but when it comes to production, we want to know, okay, what different combinations can we plug in of our capital and our labor and as a result, get a certain output because that'll help us make decisions of how many workers do we want to hire because we want to know how much of this product do we want to make. Now again, like we said in the short run, our capital is going to be fixed. So if we want to produce more of a product in the short run, we must increase the quantity of labor. So we're going to be working on a table and this table I think is on the back page of your 3.2 notes. And if you notice, the first column we're going to have is just the, the number of workers we have per day or what we're going to call this our labor. Now one thing I want you guys to know or keep in mind is that um, as we go through this, we're going to be working on the same table the entire time. We're going to say that I'm running a little business out of my house, out of my kitchen, wherever I am making pizzas. So we have the labor here, the number of workers per day. Well, what's the lowest number of workers we could hire per day? Well, it's zero. Well, after that, we have one, and then two, and three, and four, and five. And we could go all the way up if we wanted to, uh, to a thousand workers or a million workers, but it's not really going to be practical for our purposes. So we're just going to go zero through five. But what we need to understand next is how does the total amount of pizzas change with the number of workers that we hire? So our next column is going to be something called total product. It's going to be our pizzas per day or also just known as the quantity. So our total product is the total amount we can produce when hiring a specific number of workers. So again, not a trick question, but how many pizzas can we make if we hire zero workers? Well, zero pizzas. Now how about when we hire one worker or two or three? Now this is information that you do not know. You can't just guess it. So I will always provide this information to you. So let's say that whenever we have one worker, we can make four pizzas in that day. When we hire two workers, we could hire, we could make a total of 10 pizzas in that day. When we hire three workers, we can make 13 pizzas, then 15, and then 16, right? So this is the total amount that we could make with any number of worker. Now, some of you are actually already doing the next step without even realizing it, is what you're doing is you're kind of looking at, okay, every time we add another worker, how much more pizza are we getting? Well, we actually have a specific name for that. We call that the total, we call that the marginal product. And with marginal product, we look back at our total product and we say, all right, every single time we add a worker, how much more pizza do we get? So what is the change in our total product when adding one more worker? You guys might remember this word marginal. Remember marginal just kind of means additional or the next one. So for every next worker that we add, how much pizza do we get out of it? So we're not going to have anything with this first one, but whenever we hire um, our first worker going from zero workers up to, to one worker, what is the, the change in our total product or what's the additional number of pizzas we get for one additional worker? By the way, that little triangle you guys see there where it says like the triangle in total product, that's a, that's a delta and we just use delta for change in in case you haven't seen that before. It just means the change. So whenever we go from zero workers to one worker, what's the change in our total product? Well, we go from zero workers, or sorry, zero pizzas up to four pizzas. Therefore, the additional number of pizzas is four. Well, what about when we go from one worker to two workers? What is the change in our total number of pizzas? Well, this time we go from four pizzas up to 10 pizzas. So that means with our second worker, we added six more pizzas. All right, well, how about from two to three? Well, from two workers to three workers, we went from 10 to 13. That time we had three pizzas. Then from three workers to four workers, we go from 13 up to 15. So we had two pizzas that time and then only one when we hire the fifth worker. Now what I want us to see is that there's a couple trends you might notice. You say, hey, the number of pizzas we're adding is getting larger, but then it starts getting smaller. Why is that? Well, it's this concept in economics that I'm not going to ask you to know, but it's this concept known as diminishing returns. Or maybe a better way of hearing it, you guys have maybe heard the phrase, too many cooks in the kitchen, right? If I start hiring too many workers, we're actually going to start getting less productive at some point because my capital or like maybe the size of my kitchen or the number of ovens or whatever it might be, that's fixed. So we can't have any more. So once we get too many people in there, we actually become less productive as a whole. Now let's move on and let's take a look at the next two columns. And these are going to start dealing with our costs. So our costs are the total amount of money that we have to spend in order to produce a certain number of goods. Now here's what we're going to see. 
I will again always provide you with this number. But I'm going to provide it to you in kind of two different ways. What we need to understand is that some of our costs are fixed and some of them are variable. Fixed cost just means costs that we have to pay no matter what. Like, you know that if you, um, if you rent a, a, a kitchen space to make your pizzas, it doesn't matter. They don't care if you're making one pizza or a thousand pizzas. You still have to pay the same amount. It's sometimes referred to as your overhead, right? And so let's say that you pay $25 in rent um, for the day. So even when you hire no workers, you still have to pay $25. But let's say you pay that $25 plus $25 for every worker that you hire. Okay, so if we, let's say, hire one worker, well, we have the $25 in rent, that's our fixed cost, plus the $25, our variable cost for hiring that one worker. Well, 25 plus 25, that means we would be paying $50 in total cost to hire one worker. Well, what about with our second worker? Well, we have the $25, again, that we have to pay no matter what for rent, plus $25 per worker times two workers, so that's 25 plus 50, that's $75. Third worker, Right, so three workers times 25 is $75 plus another 25. Remember our overhead, our rent that we have to pay is 100. And so you guys can kind of see this pattern as we go, but really what we're doing every time here is we're just saying, okay, the cost, the total cost is $25 plus $25 per worker, right? Now, this next column might be the trickiest one that people get hung up on, and it's not that we do any confusing math, it's just that people sometimes like rush through the math here. So this next column that we have we want to understand is something known as marginal cost. Or really what we're saying is, okay, for every pizza that we add, how much more money are we spending for that pizza? For that one pizza, how much more money are we spending? So if you notice our definition, an increase in total cost for adding one more product. Now here's our formula, and this is where we have to pay very careful attention. Our formula for this is it's our change in our total cost divided by the change in our total product. So all that's saying is, okay, how much more are you spending for how many more pizzas? So we don't have a marginal cost here because we're not making any pizzas, but here's what we want to see next. If we look when we hire one worker, to move from zero workers to one worker, how much more money are we paying? Well, we already were paying our $25. So we're just paying another $25 to hire that first worker. So our change in our total cost is just $25 because we went from $25 up to 50. So our change in total cost is $25 plus our change in total product, which again is just another way of saying our marginal product. How many more pizzas did we get by spending an additional $25? Well, we spent $25 more and we got four pizzas out of it right? Because by hiring that first worker for $25, we made four pizzas. 25 divided by four gives us a marginal cost of $6.25. Really what that's saying is each additional pizza that we, we made hiring that first worker, it essentially cost us $6.25 to make that additional pizza. This isn't the average cost per pizza, it's the additional cost per pizza. Now how about this next step when we go from one worker up to two workers? So what's our change in our total cost? Well, again, going from one up to two, we're only paying another $25 to hire that second worker because we're going from 50 up to 75. So we're paying 25 more dollars, but this time by hiring another worker, we get six pizzas out of that second worker. So now what we'll do is we'll do 25 divided by six. And by doing that, what we see is that each one is $4.17. Next, we have going from two up to three, we see going from two to three, we pay 25 more dollars again, but this time we end up getting three pizzas out of it. 25 divided by three is 833. Then again, from three, dollar, three workers to four workers, we pay 25 more dollars. We get two pizzas this time. 25 divided by two is 1250. Here's what I want you to see with this last one. With this last one from going from four workers up to five workers, by hiring a fifth worker, we only get one more pizza, but we had to pay $25 to hire that fifth worker. So essentially, our additional cost for that, that 16th pizza, going from 15 up to 16, that additional pizza really cost us $25 more. So again, marginal cost is just the change in our total cost divided by our change in our total product. And there'll be another extra little video that helps walk through marginal cost since we know this can be a little bit tricky of a topic.